Today, the shining blades stand proudly as the right hand of the crown. Officially, they are the personal guard force of the monarch, but behind closed doors, they operate as a clandestine network, spying for the crown. Their current status, however, belies their rebellious origin. Over 250 years ago, in the year 1070, the kingdom of Kryta faced an existential threat. The Char, seemingly under the yoke of the Flame Legion and their Titan gods, waged war against humanity. The Char were a plague, bringing death to all who stood in their path, salting the earth behind them. Little did they know, a dark god's festering influence drove their murderous campaign. Abaddon, the fallen god of water and secrets, sought his freedom from the realms of torment. Bent to Abaddon's will, the Char War Machine broke upon the kingdoms of man as one by one they fell. Under siege, King Adelburn refused to abandon his throne and his people paid the price. The Char rained destruction upon Ascalon. Its ruins stand today bearing witness to the terrible power of their ancient cauldron of cataclysm. The few humans who managed to survive the searing had followed the king's son, Prince Rurik, into banishment. They fled over the Shiver Peak Mountains, heading for Kryta. Rurik's people would find hope in the west, but sadly not the young prince himself. In 1071, after the fall of Ascalon, the Char marched southwest to the Orion Peninsula. Once there, they swept through the kingdom's defences in a matter of hours. King Reza defended the gates of Ra as the Char fell upon the god's holy city. In desperation and panic, Vizier Kilbron used the forbidden texts of the old gods. From his warded tower, he uttered the dark incantations inscribed upon the lost scrolls, and the Char, the city, and the entire peninsula were destroyed, drowned in the Sea of Sorrows. It is unclear whether Kilbron had foreknowledge of the scale of destruction he unleashed. However, we do know he was a disciple of Abaddon, and Abaddon sought the destruction of the city which had cast him out. The Char assault on Kryta began in 1070. The Norn had given free passage to the Char over the Shiver Peak Mountains, allowing them to attack both Ascalon and Kryta almost simultaneously. The Krytans were losing badly. In the face of defeat, the Kryten sovereign, King Jaden, abandoned his sacred duties and his people. The king's paramour, Priestess Bira, and their daughter, Princess Salma, were forced to flee to the Temple of Ages. There, Salma took up the mantle of priesthood to watch over the threshold between the mundane realm and that of the gods. Meanwhile, the kingdom and its people were left in disarray to face the might of the Char. Fear and despair gripped Kryta as the legions marched to victory, defeating its last defenders, the Lion Guard. When Saul D'Alessio walked out of the jungle, promising victory and security, the people welcomed him with open arms. The price of their salvation was apostasy. All they needed to do was renounce the old gods who had already abandoned them and accept the Unseen Ones in their stead. What other choice did they have? So Saul's army grew and Kryta soon came under the protection of the White Mantle. True to his word, Saul led his followers into battle and the Unseen Ones eventually decimated the Char. After the victory, Saul D'Alessio was spirited away by the Unseen Ones and the leadership of the White Mantle passed to Jestikar Hablion. On the surface, Kryta and her people seemed at peace. The White Mantle had indeed defeated the Char, but the real price of the Unseen Ones' intervention was far higher than mere adoration. Villagers from every corner of Kryta were ritually tested by a mysterious artifact called the Eye of Janthea, and the Chosen were identified. They were then taken from their homes, told they were to join the ranks of the White Mantle. The Chosen, however, were never seen again. As more and more people were taken, rumours began to spread, 
and a few who were brave and skilled enough followed a group of the Chosen to uncover the truth. They tracked the mantle to Bloodstone Fen. There they witnessed the ritual slaughter of their fellow countrymen atop the great Maguma Bloodstone. In that moment, the Shining Blade were born. They would become an insurgent force bent on the destruction of the White Mantle and its gods. They would not rest until their people were free and the line of King Doric restored. The leader of the Shining Blade at the time was a monk called Ivinia. Bent on finding a way to defeat forces she could not even see, she allowed herself to fall prey to betrayal and manipulation. Abaddon had set his pieces on the board and his dark influence stretched out across the void towards Kryta. To be continued in the Flameseeker Prophecies.